Hello beautiful people, hope you're doing fantastic on this wonderful day and today it is a day of days, okay? I can't win in a situation, okay? No, no matter what I do, okay? People will get annoyed at me. Tell me down below in comments instantly who do you think will win the World Cup, okay? So put your neck on the line here so that you're not just laughing at me. Smash your like, let's hit 2,000 likes and also subscribe if you're new. Thank you all for 302,000 subscribers. We're doing my World Cup prediction video. We are literally a month away now from the World Cup. I did my initial World Cup prediction back in March, which is a long time ago now. It feels like a whole new year. A lot has happened since then, okay? In terms of form for a lot of different teams, I will give you my honest thoughts about the World Cup. And for England, as I'm, and I'm, I'm an Englishman, it's, it's, it's not looking good, bruv. So I hope you do enjoy. Go easy on me. And let's get stuck into it. But first things first, this video has been sponsored by Manscaped. Manscaped is the number one male grooming product in the world. Offering the best tools to help you save your balls. This is an absolute lifesaver. If you're a guy then you absolutely know what I'm talking about. Manscaped for this video has given us the perfect package 4.0 of absolutely everything that you need. The lawnmower, the creme de la creme. I trust this shaver more than my own family. And the best part is, it's got a light as well. I've used Manscaped products for two years and I've never had a single problem with this. Cordless, waterproof, easy to recharge. Also included are two things that I never thought I actually really cared about or needed, but since I've got it, I kind of now, it's now part of my daily routine. The crop preserver and also the crop reviver just to protect your areas across the entire day. And then there's the best part, the underwear. These bad boys are without a shadow of a doubt the best underwear I've ever worn. I've worn these when I play football. I wore this on my wedding day. I specifically selected these. Insane quality and of course after you've done your business with the Manscaped products of course absolutely no irritations whatsoever. And also a travel bag as well. If this does interest you, and trust me, if you're a guy, once you get it, you will not regret it. Go to manscaped.com for 20% off with free international shipping and two free gifts when you use code VISA at checkout. Make sure to use my code, link is at the top of the description, and you will not regret it. Thank you, Manscaped, for sponsoring today's video, and let's get straight into it. So we are going to be using the Telegraph.com World Cup predictor because everything you need in one place, and it also looks quite nice as well. I'll leave a link to this website down below in the description as well. Starting off with Group A, of course, with Qatar, Ecuador, Senegal, and Netherlands. Now, I cannot imagine a world where Qatar actually makes it through. I I can't, okay? Their team is very much interesting. The thing is with Qatar, they've not won in the last six games, and in those games include some weird, weird matches, including them playing against Fiorentina and also Lazio. But in those games, they didn't lose. They actually drew both games, which is a, a decent level, you'd imagine. The last match that they won was against Bulgaria, and then they also beat Egypt in the Arab Cup. That was in a match for third place, but that's a decent opponent. In recent games, they lost to the Croatian under-23s, 3-0, lost to Canada 2-0, but drew to Chile 2-2. So the chance of them causing an upset is unlikely, but it's not impossible. Ecuador are a competent side. They actually are decent. However, they do draw a lot of games, but they have done well against the likes of Mexico. Draw to Mexico, beat Nigeria, but they also drew to Japan and drew to Saudi Arabia. But they can get a big result actually drawing to Brazil in the qualifiers. And then the Senegal AFCON champions, of course, with that on their back, representing Africa. They lost to Liberia, recently, which is a very weird game for them, and then recently drew to Iran. And Netherlands are in fantastic form, beating Wales both times, and also Belgium both times in Nations League, and also got a win and a draw against Poland. When they played Germany a couple of months ago, they drew 1-1, one -one, so Netherlands are in good form going into this tournament. So for me, it has to be Netherlands, Senegal, Ecuador and Qatar. I would like to imagine a world where Qatar could get, they could get a result against Ecuador. However, Ecuador, I feel like has got a bit more pedigree to them than Qatar. But you never know, knowing the fact that, you know, referees may be a bit biased to Qatar for obvious reasons. I would not be surprised if something with VAR got involved for one of those games. I'm just putting it out there. It's definitely not impossible. Now it's time for the group that you've been waiting for, which is going to be group B. And with England, Iran, USA and Wales, this is not 
not going to be good. This is going to be carnage, especially on Twitter. So before England kicks a ball, England has not won a game in six games. In all of their games in Nations League with a group of Hungary, Germany and Italy, they've not won a single game. And not just the fact that they didn't win, but also that they didn't score. In countless minutes, England could not score a goal that was not a penalty. So not only are they just not getting a result, but they also aren't playing well and creating real good chances. With a team of Kane, is really hard to achieve. So I can't lie, it's really hard for me to say that I think that England will be top of the group. I do not think that it is a sure thing. Pretty much every team in this group, other than maybe Iran, is also in quite poor form. USA recently drew to Saudi Arabia, lost to Japan 2-0, drew to El Salvador in last three games. They did get a good draw against Uruguay and beat Morocco 3-0. Wales had a tough group in Nations League, which they couldn't win a single game against Poland, Belgium or Netherlands, but they are some tough teams. And Iran recently drew against Senegal and also beat Uruguay 1-0, but did lose to Algeria. So really not a single team here is really in that great of four. So I think it's really hard to put it this group. Now for group B, I'm gonna put, and I can't believe I'm doing this, I'm gonna go Iran to top the group. England second, Wales third, USA fourth. I am genuinely going for that because that I, I back Iran. Iran is actually a better team than what people give them credit for. England are in dire form right now, and I cannot put myself to get excited. I, I can't. I can't do it to myself. I actually back Iran. I don't think the US team is the best, and Wales can do something. I do think they can, but it is more reliant on how much can Gareth Bale drag them, because other than Gareth Bale, I do think that it is a poor team. World Cups are all about surprises, and I actually think Iran could do something, just because I just have a feeling. And because of the current form that England are in, I I think that we should top the group, and I really want to put us to top the group, but the current morale at England right now is so kind of is so negative that I actually I cannot do it to myself. Group C is pretty much who do you think will go through between Mexico and Poland? Argentina will be top of the group. Not a single doubt in my mind. They've been the most informed side in the world. Out of everyone, I'm pretty sure they have not lost a game in about three and a half years, maybe even touching four years now. They are in incredible form. So they will top the group without a shadow of a doubt, in my opinion. It's all about who will be next up in the group. And it really is between Me Mexico and Poland. Poland had a tough Nations League with Wales, Netherlands and Belgium. And they beat Wales twice. You're the more beatable team each time of asking. Got a draw against Netherlands. They are quite a hard team to really judge. And then there's Mexico, who in recent games lost to Colombia 3-2, beat Peru 1-0, but then lost to Paraguay 1-0. So again, they aren't really doing that well either. I can imagine a world where they both beat Saudi Arabia, they both lose to Argentina, and they then draw to each other, and it'll all be based on how much they get beat by Argentina. Or how many goals they score past Saudi Arabia. I can imagine them being both on four points. I think they're both very, very similar teams. And for that reason, Reason, I am going to back my boy Robert Lewandowski, and that's my main reasoning. I think they'll be, but I think they'll both be incredibly close. And I do feel harsh, but for that, I've not really added Saudi Arabia into this conversation. But there's a reason why. In recent form, they've been decent. Draws against USA, draws against Ecuador. That's a good result. Their performance in the last major tournament was really poor. In the Arab Cup, they lost to Jordan, they drew to Palestine, and then they lost to Morocco. Really poor results from them only a year ago. Form recently has been decent, but I do think that Poland with Lewandowski and Mexico with a more balanced team all around, I just think would be a bit too much. Maybe one maybe one of those two games, they can maybe get a draw. I can't see them winning a game. And for that reason, that's why I put them bottom. Group D of France, Australia, Denmark, and Tunisia. And I do think that France will not make this anywhere near as easy as they should do. France... I do believe in the World Cup curse. I do think that is a thing that does happen. And Denmark is a team that has got history recently of getting one over them. Twice. They beat France twice. I will instantly put Denmark to top the group. I think Denmark is topping it. I don't think France is a sure thing. They can easily lose to Denmark. And France, in recent form, has got some weird thing about them that they just don't really perform 
anywhere near as good as they really should. The, and they have got it in them to trip up. They only won one game of their six in the Nations League. People forget about that. They beat Austria 2-0, but yet they drew to Austria once, lost to Croatia and drew to them, and then lost to Denmark twice. And with that, Tunisia has been in great form, beating Chile 2-0, beating Japan 3-0. They did lose to Brazil 5-1, but, you know, it is Brazil and they did have 10 men. And then there's Australia who, surprisingly, knocked out Peru to get to the World Cup, so fair play to them. However, I my main issue is that They've only played New Zealand since, and that's it. They played New Zealand twice. They beat them twice, at least. But I feel like there's not enough preparation there. Can Australia get a result against a Tunisia or a France? I think that is possible. Do I really want to put myself on the line here and say that France are getting knocked out in the group stage? No one thought it was possible for Germany, and they did. No one thought it was possible for Spain. And they did back in 2014. No one thought it was possible for Italy. But they did. Am I going to follow it again? Because all the signs are telling me that it's going to be a collapse. It's going to be a disaster. And I actually, for some reason, want to believe it. I would put Tunisia, France, Australia. I think France can be knocked out in a group stage. If you don't believe me, that is completely fine. But I'm going by the form they're in, the morale of the team... And also, how World Cups have always gone. The last three winners of World Cups have been knocked out in group stage. And there's a reason why for that. The same team that won it isn't in the same kind of headspace. They think they maybe are too big. They don't fight in the same way. Because once you've already won something once, it's even harder to do it again. I think a team like Tunisia could get a result against them. I genuinely believe that. History is on my side. Group E, a group of Spain, Costa Rica, Germany, and Japan. Of course, the easy bet is just put in Germany and Spain to go through and then just move on. It is hard for me to not think that way. I think in recent form, Spain has been good. Spain has also got decent head-to-head -head against Germany as well in recent years. Don't forget the last time they played, Spain beat Germany 6-0. Of course, it was two years ago, but that does make a difference. Costa Rica beating Uzbekistan 2-1 recently and then drawing to South Korea after their game against New Zealand that they only won 1-0. Japan recently beating USA, drawing to Ecuador. The last loss was to Tunisia back in June and also lost to Brazil back in June as well. But Germany in the Nations League was really poor. They beat Italy 5-2 but then they drew every game and then lost once against Hungary in Germany. But I don't think it'll be enough of a gap between them and Japan to really get knocked out. So I'm going to go Spain in first because of the great form. Germany will be second place. Japan third and Costa Rica fourth. I think Japan could on their day get a good result against Costa Rica. And then the other two, maybe they could get a draw. I think Japan could get a draw against Germany. I just don't think it'd be enough of a gap for Germany to be knocked out. I, especially after what happened back in 2018. I don't think it will happen again. Belgium, Canada, Morocco, and Croatia. Belgium lost both games against Netherlands in the Nations League and then drew into Wales as well. Canada recently lost to Uruguay, beat Qatar 2-0, but then also lost to Honduras, who, of course, didn't qualify for the World Cup. Croatia in good form, drawing and beating France, beating Austria, and also beating Denmark. Beating Denmark twice is actually also very impressive. And Morocco's last loss was against USA but recently drew to Paraguay and also beat Chile. It's hard to really judge where Morocco is at but they got some good players in their squad though. On their day I think any team here can get a result. I honestly think of that. So I really want to back Canada but the more time I think about it I kind of just really can't see it. I really can't. Belgium has Kevin De Bruyne. That's the main thing about Belgium. They've got KDB. I'm going to back Croatia here to be first place. And then second place, I I, I, I kind of want to back Morocco here, but I've got to say Belgium still. That means I think it'd be Morocco third and Canada fourth. Now, of course, by the way, the entire time, I don't actually, I don't remember exactly where I put teams. I think last time I put Belgium, Croatia, Canada, Morocco. I think I put that in for my last video back in March. So it's a bit different. Of course, recent form is big. I do think it's a big factor. On to the second to last group here. Group G, Brazil, Serbia, Switzerland, and Cameroon. Let's just put Brazil first place instantly. Just like the group with Argentina, I cannot see a world where they 
have a big mess up and not top of the group. They've not lost a game since the Copa America final against Argentina and then last time they also lost was back in 2019 also against Argentina and in recent games just blasting teams away 5-1 3-0 1-0 against Japan to be fair but then 5-1 4-0 4-0 4-0 Blasting teams away with their attack. Cameroon is not entering a tournament with great form at all. Losing 2 0 to Uzbekistan in the recent game and also 1 0 loss to South Korea. Serbia doing well in the Nations League, beating the likes of Norway, who didn't qualify, of course, Sweden and Slovenia getting some good results there. And then there's Switzerland beating Spain and beating Portugal. And then, of course, a the Czech in the last few games. But then losing to those three teams in the games before that, just before. So really, it's between Serbia and Switzerland here. Are you on the side of Mitro with Serbia and just hoping that's enough? Or are you going to be back in the more balanced and defensively more sounder team of Switzerland? But then there's Serbia with an attack of Mitro and Vlahovic and then Tadic. My main issue for Serbia is their defence. Defence, I don't really know, but attacking-wise, it's proper. That game against Serbia and Switzerland will be a very good game. And that is a final game in the group as well. I really don't know what to say here. I really don't know how to call this. But I think I'm going to back Serbia just because I want to. Switzerland third and Cameroon fourth. Cameroon in really poor form. Losing to Uzbekistan recently is really poor off them. I just don't think their team is that great going into it personally. Toko Akambi and Matip are decent players. I just think that the rest of the team isn't really up to scratch in comparison to Switzerland or Serbia. But that is Group G. And now here we go. The final group of the World Cup. Group H. Portugal, Ghana, Uruguay and South Korea. Here we go on this one. Let's start with Portugal. Inconsistent in Nations League, losing of course to Switzerland, losing to Spain, but then beating Czech 4 0. At least they can beat them. I do think Portugal are still not the finished product. I still feel like there's things that's missing in the setup and players aren't really clicking in the way that you would hope they would. Uruguay in recent form, reasonable, beating Canada 2 0, but losing to Iran. But then since then, winning quite a lot of games against the likes of Venezuela, Chile. Peru, South Korea, other known as Human Son FC, which Son scores quite a lot of their goals. If Son isn't performing, then South Korea doesn't usually perform either. They beat Cameroon 1 0, but then drew to Costa Rica, not too bad, lost to Japan 3 0. And then the last good result was against Egypt, potentially, but they're still not the best either without Mo Salah. And then Ghana, who lost to Brazil 3 0 recently, beat Chile on pens, but then also lost to Japan 4 1. I still don't think anything has changed here, and I still think. I think I'll go with Portugal, Uruguay, Korea, and Ghana for this group. So there you go. That is the group stage done. And now this is time for the round of 16. I do wonder how different this would look to the real life. I think there'd be some matchups here that would actually go to real life. So I can imagine where Brazil for Uruguay is a match in the round of 16. I can definitely also imagine Portugal versus Serbia. I think that'd be a great matchup as well. Iran v Senegal definitely looks interesting now that I think Iran may top the group. And the first match is uh, the match that I won't really want to go into first but it is Netherlands versus England. Do I think that England would get knocked out by the Netherlands? Now I put them second in the group because if they were top then they would have faced Senegal which is of course a more reasonable game to imagine them getting a win. This one I think would be a lot more of a difficult game. Netherlands are in very good form as we know and England are in very much awful form and I think that may continue into the group stage if they keep playing the way that they're still playing in that kind of five back negative system. It may be a massive problem for them. Netherlands hasn't really got any like insane strike force right now and which could be a benefit but he have got a good defense in De Ligt and Van Dijk. And I am English and I don't want to say that I think we could get knocked out in round 16 but I do think that the Southgate era is slowly coming to an end. I do think that I don't know if there's too much more left in the tank here because all signs aren't looking good for him. It's not been good. We've not been scoring goals in open play and we've simply not been winning games. We've not won in six games. I can't kind of go against that and just blindly think, yeah, we'll still beat them. Of course, we still can. It's still possible. I do think that things come to an end and I think this could be the nail in the coffin for Southgate. And our poor form and top of Netherlands very good form, it's going to be really tough, bro. 
I'm going to put Netherlands to win. Argentina versus Tunisia. I don't think I need too much time on this. I think Tunisia may need to score a goal, but I think that at the end of the game, it will still be 3-1 Argentina in this game. I doubt this would be the moment that they get sent home. So Argentina are going through. Iran versus Senegal will be a fantastic match as both nations here will be happy to be in the round of 16 of the World Cup and dreams can keep going further, of course. Between Iran and Senegal, who do I think could maybe go further? And in this, I do do believe that it would be Senegal that would get past Iran, a very, very good Senegalese team, and Iran, I think, that their dream may come to an end in around the 16. Denmark against Poland, very good game this. Both sides would fancy their chances because it's a you know against a more reasonable team in comparison to maybe other nations like Argentina or Brazil. Issue with Poland is that other than Lewandowski, they've not got too much else. In a group they had to get through a Mexican side, I do think Denmark is a side which is much better right now in the in this time of their history to play against and Denmark in a fantastic form. Poland in not bad form but not great form either because they did face some pretty tough sides in Netherlands and also Belgium. I think this game is pretty comfortable to go to Denmark. Spain versus Belgium. Spain versus Belgium. I like the look of this game. I do like it a lot. The time is ticking for Belgium's golden generation. They've got to make it count now. While KDB still at his peak, Lukaku's still doing very well, Katoir is in the form of his life. If they are going to do it, they've got to do it now. This is almost now and never in Spain. Their team, who was very, very poor a couple of years back, is now becoming more of a unit. A very, very well put together side at Spain. Very technically brilliant, especially in that midfield. If I got to pick one team here, I'm going Spain. I will go for Spain. Brazil versus Uruguay. This would be a fantastic game to watch. However, similar to Argentina, I do think that Brazil, I don't think this would be the game that they may slip up. It's possible because Uruguay will know about how they play. They will know how to defend against them. But I don't think Uruguay in this stage of the history has got the defense at their current peak to come back against the Brazilian attack. So, of course, I'll be going for Brazil. Croatia versus Germany. I think could be that game that may cause an upset. Of course, there's some upsets already that I've put in this video. Some you may not agree with. And between Croatia and Germany, I like the thought of Croatia winning. I do. Germany, they are almost becoming that kind of final product. I still don't think they've got a raw, like, clinical striker. They've got some great attacking, like, creative players like Musiala. But I don't think the likes of a Havertz is really still that guy. Or Werner is still that guy to be their main striker. And this Croatian side is experienced and I think that Croatia will knock out Germany. This is not hard to imagine happening. And then the final one here, Portugal versus Serbia. Serbia who beat Portugal to get here in the first place, guaranteed while well, Portugal had to go through the playoffs. When it comes to Portugal v Serbia, there's a beautiful sort of poetry with this that I really would love. These two have come together again and that this is the moment. Portugal to knock out Serbia. So that leaves us to the quarterfinals, which will be Netherlands versus Argentina, Spain versus Brazil, Senegal versus Denmark, and Croatia versus Portugal. Let's leave it on this screen. Netherlands versus Argentina will be a fantastic game. Van Dijk up against Lino Messi. But I will go for Argentina against Netherlands. If I just think about the two teams, I just can see Argentina getting maybe a penalty shootout win against them. I think it'll be a tough game. Spain versus Brazil. I do feel like the technical side of Spain could be the type of team that can maybe perform against Brazil, against their type of defenders. But I don't want to be boring here, but I think I've got to go for Brazil to beat Spain. I think I have to. And then there's match 59, which is Senegal versus Denmark. This would be great for either of these two sides. And between these two, I'm going to go for Denmark to beat Senegal, and then Croatia versus Portugal. I'm going to go into the semi-final. I think it's going to be Portugal in that game. I think they're going to keep it going. I think they will. And therefore, it will be the semis. Argentina versus Brazil in the semi-finals, which would be a fantastic... That would be insane. 
absolutely insane. And I think in this game, you're picking Neymar or Messi. Argentina typically has the favour against Brazil in the last couple of recent years. I kind of feel like there'd be some sort of comeback or revenge here at the biggest stage. And I'm going to back Brazil to beat Argentina in the semi-final. And therefore, it is going to be Denmark versus Portugal. For this game, I will go for Portugal. And therefore, it'll be a Brazil versus Portugal final. I don't think it'd be a Messi v to Ronaldo final. And then in the winner of the World Cup final, I'm going to say Brazil. And that, for me, is my winner of the 2022 World Cup. I'm going to put Brazil. I like the Portuguese team. I really think that they can go far in the tournament if they get things working. If it clicks and they've got a fantastic side of good defence, good midfield and a good attack as well if it comes together and it is possible. Brazil, I just, there's a there's a weird good feeling vibe around Brazil, which I can't put my finger on, but it just works. And of course, if England can't win it, then Brazil or Argentina, either the two, but I wouldn't mind seeing either of those two win it if it cannot be England. So there you go, boys. That is my World Cup predictions. Tell me down below who have you gone for to win the World Cup. I hope you guys do enjoy, and I'll see you next time for another video. And stay safe.